Hi friends, welcome to another edition of Quick Video brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. Hope you are all having a wonderful year 2023. So this year we are going to continue our series on demystifying the various new DAX functions which got released in Power BI. So last edition we saw how we can make use of the window function which got introduced in Power BI. Now this edition we are going to extend it a bit and see how the, the relative position argument can be used inside your window function so as to handle a common business scenario. So to start off let's revisit the definition of uh, window function. So if you see the syntax of window function as seen before this consists of a from argument and a to argument which indicates from which position to which position needs to be considered within the window and there is a from type and the to type which indicates whether we are looking for an absolute position or a relative position. In the previous edition we saw how we can use the absolute edition so as to get the top three sales from within each of the regions and we picked out the top three vendors using that. Uh, the video can be given in the description and you can refer that to how we can use the absolute uh, parameters. In this case we are extending it and we are going to use the relative parameters. So as the name implies relative parameters means we will be for each row which is in the current filter context we will be applying a relative position based on that row so as to bring us the result. So let's see a common uh, business scenario which can be used to illustrate this relative position logic. So in this case we are going to use a sample data like this. So if you see this sample data it consists of vendor sales and the sale date. So over a period of time for every month we have some sales figures posted here for various vendors. Now what we are going to do is like we are going to find out a running total in this case. So we are going to get the average of the last three periods sales. So in this case as it's obvious from the requirement we need to get a relative position for every sale month we have to go to a dynamic window based on that current month which is in the filter context and get including the current period the previous three periods which means the previous two plus the current period. So that means it is like a floating window which changes for every month which is in the current filter context. So this is a typical scenario where we can make use of this relative position based logic and use the function window to define this floating window. And once this floating window is defined, we can apply the required aggregation over this floating window. In this case, we are going to apply average. So as to get a moving average, which is going to consider this floating three period windows. So let's see how we can use this window function and inside our Power BI create a measure based on that. So as to get this moving three period average. To start up the illustration, let's open a blank Power BI data desktop and let's connect to the file. So we are using a CSV file in this case. So we need to select text CSV from the get data option and then we need to browse to the sheet which has the monthly sales for each vendors. Wait for the data to be loaded. Once the data is previewed, you can click on load to load the data. Once the data is loaded, check and ensure that the data types are correctly interpreted. So you see the sale date here is currently in the text so for that you select the column and go to the column tools change it on to the date or date and time type of data type unless you do this the calculations won't be correct so once you change that now sale value is whole number that is fine and vendor is text so that's fine so ensure that the data types are correct before you start creating your measures on top of the data now that the data is loaded let's start our activity so as to see how we can generate the DAX query as before let's first go to the DAX studio so go to external tools and start the DAX studio we are going to use DAX studio for formulating the DAX query and once we have a working query we can then copy it and create the measure based on that once you are inside the DAX studio window you can see the table there and now we can start by applying the required window function so in this case if you remember the window function would require a filter context or a single row each time so that it can calculate the corresponding related position and find out the floating window based on it. So in order to give it that required filter context window we will be applying a 
aggregation function like summarize or summarize columns so as to provide it with the required filter context and the filter context should have all the columns which is required by the window function for calculating the required average so in this case we would require the vendor this is for partitioning it for each vendor we need to find it out so we need to partition it based on vendor then we should have the sale date which indicates the sequence in which it needs to go or traverse so as to get the floating window so every time we would require the three periods including the current period so we would require the date for traversing through the sequence so as to get the last three periods and then finally the sales value so as for calculating the averages of those values so let's start by putting in evaluate and we are going to start by adding a aggregate function so let's start by typing summarize columns since this creates an aggregate table this table will have all the required rows which we require for the filter context and on top of it we can apply this window function with the relative position which will iterate through each of these rows take each of these rows as the current context and with the relative position corresponding to the row it will calculate the last required number of periods in this case we want three periods so let's start by giving the if you see the syntax it includes the group by columns here everything is coming from the same table so we don't really require a filter table here we can just pass the column names itself you pass the vendor column first then the sale date column and then the sale value column so if you want we can add a measure also instead of passing the sale value column as it is we can add a aggregation also it works the same way so we have added a symbol aggregation of the sale value and we have named it the sales and we are going to name the new column as rolling three month average and here we are going to apply the average x so here since it gives the relative window in every case and we want to iterate through the window and find out the average within those floating window we have to use an iterator function so the different types of iterator functions are like average x sum x count x etc in this case we are going to calculate the average so we should use the average x function now for the table part we need to pass this window this is where the default floating window has to be passed so how can we pass the floating window so we will use the window function and then we will have the different parameters for the window function so here for every row we have to go two places behind so as to get the last two periods we need to start from there and move until the current window so the relative position if you see we will specify it by means of an offset so the current row would be offset zero and if you want to go backward you need to use negative offset or if you want to go forward you need to use positive offset so in this case we can do it in two ways if you are sorting the dates in the ascending order we have to go backwards to position from the current date if you are sorting it in the descending order we have to go two positions forward from the current date. so either way you have to specify the corresponding offsets so let's start by the easiest method which is ascendingly sorting the dates and then going two positions backward so the first position would be from negative two that is two positions backward we should also always give the position for the starting date and then move up to the current date if it is going from backward to the current date so let's put minus two and then let's pass rel to indicate that it's a relative position then let's put the second one as the zero position which is the current row again relative and if you see the third option that is where you need to pass the relation so in this case the relation would be actually a filter table what would be that filter table that filtered table should only contain the rows for the vendor which is in the current context because for every vendor we have to do this calculation right for every vendor for every row so for that purpose we will put a filter which will give us a filter table and what we need to filter is that out of the whole table the entire vendor sales month sales table we are going to only pick out those rows where vendor sales vendor would be the current vendor so it will be vendor equal to to get the current vendor with the contest we can use min or max so this will give us the filter table which consists of all the rows for the current vendor within that we need to then pass this window function and pick out the floating window which starts from the prior two periods up to current period so that will be your relation and now if you see the next parameter it would be order by so here you can use order by and it should be function order by and it should be ordered by the date we can 
currently use the ascending order of the date itself that's why we used negative offset if you are using the descending order you need to change the offset accordingly so here i am using the ascending order so we can put sales date comma ascending and then once the order by is also added then the next one is a blank there you can have only one value as of now which is keep so let's keep it into different different lines so as to improve the readability so the first two would be the positions the second major thing would be the relationship then the order by and then the blanks and then finally the partition by so in this case the partition by is very obvious the partition by is based on the vendor so you can put the vendor column here. so this will put the window function here and this will give you the dynamic three period floating window and on top of this you need to calculate the sales now if you see this window function it is not including the sales column so if you see the result this result will not include the sales column but we have to calculate average over the sales column so for that purpose what we need to do is that inside the order by we can add a dummy column which will be the sales column this is just used as a dummy column because sales is anyways unique so it will not be affecting your sequencing so you can just put sales value so once you put this then you can use this inside your averages now let's make this a little bit bigger so that you can clearly see the results so now we have this window function and now if you try to run this you can see that it will throw us an error the reason is you see there is a red arrow within that filter so the place where we passed this relationship there was no way by which the query could identify that it has unique combination so we need to make the query believe that the relation contains a unique combination of values based on our columns so the best way to do that would be to apply again a aggregation function so here we are going to basically use an aggregation function like summarize or summarize columns and apply a dummy grouping the data is in fact at the level of vendor for every sales day but still we will be applying the summarize so as to make this window function believe that there is no duplicates within that relationship that is the relation parameter that we pass contains unique rows so let's apply that so what we have done here is that we have added a summarize on top of the filter table and what we have done is like we have added the columns vendor sales date and sales value so it's like a dummy grouping and but it ensures that the window function understands this relationship parameter contains the unique set of values based on vendor sale date and sales value so once you do this change and now if you run this you will be getting the correct result now if you want to evaluate the result it's very easy we have the excel already we can evaluate it based on the excel sheet so for the first day for every vendor if you see for the vendor one currently the first day the value will be the same value because there is no prior value same for vendor two the first day it will be the same value for every vendor if you see for the first day the value will repeat now for the second day the value would be average of first and the second day sales so average of these two to identify that you can just go back to your excel sheet and see the for the first vendor you can see the average of these two values the average will be shown below you can see that it is 77212 now if you come back and check against this you can see that it's 77212 similarly for the second vendor if you see it is for the second day it is going to be 66662 now again if you go back to the excel sheet and look for the second vendor and get the first two days average it will be 66662 and again for the third day it will be the average of first three so for vendor one it would be 77692.6666 go back and check against your query it will be 77692.6666 so that which means that any day you consider the calculation will be correct now if you want to check you can randomly check one more say for the 91087 this row which is september 30th row it is 71316 so let's go to the excel sheet look for september 30th row which is this one and it will be the average of last three including the current so it will be 71316 and if you check here it will be again 71316 so as you see that our calculation is now working so now all you would require would be to copy this and create a measure using this calculation now that you have found that the calculation is working fine in this case it's a straightforward copy and paste because we already have the table in the current context because of this filter expression and summarize on top of it we have the table in the current context 
So all you would require would be just copy this average x function. Once you copy this, just come back to the sheet, the Power BI window sheet. Right click on your table, create new measure and you need to just give the measure the name. So name it rolling three month average and then copy this and paste this expression and then create. Once you have created it, now it's time for you to test it. Just add a table visual and then add the vendor inside that, the sale date inside that. You can instead of adding the hierarchy, you can add the date directly and then you can add the sale value which will be the total value for that day and then the rolling three months. You will see that you will get the same values here what you saw in your query window. So if you want to see it correctly, you can see vendor 1 March 31st, it, it's the same value which gets repeated. Second one it will be 77212, third one it will be 77692.67. Here it is automatically rounded to two decimal places which you can change if you want by going to the sale value and changing it here. Like number of decimal places you want, you can change it here. So like that you can change it for anything. So if you go to any date here, it will compare, you compare it with your uh, calculation, it will be correct. So vendor 2, August 29, the value is 61663. Again, you go, go here and check vendor 2, August 29, it is 61663. So vendor 2, it's the correct. So as you see, the values will match between your calculation versus what is shown in the visual which means that your measure is working. This is a very useful argument which can be used inside your window function so as to get the relative position and define a dynamic window based on each of the filter context row and calculate any kind of aggregations. In this case, we used average. Instead of this, if you want, you can, if you want to find out a rolling uh, total, you can apply some max, etc. So what, depending on the type of the calculation, you can use the corresponding iterator function. It has to be an iterator function because you have to basically iterate through the rows which are identified as the dynamic floating. So as seen from this illustration, we can make use of this relative argument inside your window function so as to define a floating window corresponding to each of your row contacts and it can be very easily used for scenarios like this where you want to do some kind of a comparative operation based on the current filter context. So in this case, we looked at a case of a rolling window or a running some kind of calculation, but it can be used in other scenarios as well, where you need some kind of a comparison logic compared to your current row context. Make sure you follow the videos and subscribe to my channel for getting useful videos like this. Feel free to click on the bell icon for getting notifications and share across if you find these videos useful. Keep sending your comments and meet you soon with the last part of the series, which is on the overflow function. Thanks for it.